Hi, I'm Realtor Sarah Morrow with Cell State Ace Realty. Today I get to talk title with expert Dana Schnorr of Fidelity National Title. Dana lives here in Longmont and she's been in the title space for 24 years. She seems to know absolutely everyone in local real estate and in legal circles too. She masterfully liaises between professionals of all types, she's a wealth of detailed knowledge, and she's a ton of fun. Dana has been in Longmont for over 40 years and this coming summer she's celebrating her 50th wedding anniversary. She's got two amazing grown kids and six grandkids who are all heavily involved in activities, sports, and stock shows. So she stays really busy, but she's made a little time today to help us understand the most important part of a home sale, the closing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me today. Of course. Great. Why don't we jump right in? So why don't you tell us a little bit about Fidelity National Title, your role there, and what you love about your job? Well, Fidelity National Title is probably the largest title insurance company in the nation. Wow. We write one out of every four policies in the nation, and uh, we're probably... Um, at this moment, I believe we have $1.8 billion in claims reserves. $1.8 billion in claims reserves. What does that mean? So that means that if your buyer, who you represented and we did the closing, has some kind of a claim after closing, um, something happens that maybe someone's heir comes out and says, oh gosh, you sold my grandpa's house, mm -hmm. and uh, I found this old uh, will and in the will the house was given to me and we didn't record this we didn't know about it but I'm sorry but the house is mine now we might have a claim for that person that poor buyer now that owns the home is thinking what how do I I don't know that I own the home anymore mm. and so they call the title insurance company and then we start looking into things and that could open up a claim for us and we would then try to work that out with uh, both the buyer and the claimant. So this sort of segues nicely into my second question which is like is title is mostly what you are an insurance company yeah. is title does title really refer to like the insurance of ownership and the um, like the protection of one's ownership so title insurance um, is it's kind of boring <laughs> but um, we are the only insurance company that insures the past um, what you usually have is life insurance auto insurance those kinds of insurances that, that cover things that will happen in the future. Mm. Title insurance covers what's happened on the property. And when I say on the, uh, what's happened, anything that's been recorded against the property since we actually go back to patent. And we try to bring all of those documents forward and do our, our examination on the home when we receive the contract. And so what we're doing is ensuring to the buyer that after you sign all your documents that you own that home lock, stock, and barrel free of the seller's liens, free of any other prior owner's problems. Everything is free and clear and that buyer owns that property and, and they don't have any problems going forward. Gotcha. So the claimant in the situation that you described opens a claim should something come up from the past. Really, it's the only, all you're really doing is right. dealing with the past. Right. right, right. Okay. Right. And it's where, like she, that example, she would have said, hey, there's a discrepancy between a will or an estate that's out there right. and the actual right. deed of ownership. Right. And that's where you guys come in. Right. Right. Okay. And so we would open a file and then... I, obviously, our attorneys would start that, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how the claim process at that point would take over, and, and then they'd try to work that out with everyone. Gotcha. So let's, let's reel it back a little bit. So um, that's what Fidelity is. That's who you guys are. Can you tell us about your role there? I am the sales rep, and so I probably have the most fun job. <laughs> I get to take 
my realtor friends out to lunch and or we might have drinks together after work. Um, we probably develop a relationship after several years and I have to admit that I some of my greatest friends started out as my clients mm. and I've been in the business about 24 years now and uh, I've got great friends and uh, it's really just been my whole life mm. the last 24 years. Wow. So this is my second career and um, I have enjoyed every moment of it. So your role when you're in sales and you're in title mm -hmm. is your clients are mostly realtors. Mm -hmm. I assume there's sometimes attorneys, yeah. ever any individuals or? No. Uh, well, you know, we have, we get for sale by owner contracts. Um, do we have a relationship with those sellers and buyers? No. Um, we've been referred probably by an attorney mm -hmm. or by a, a realtor. Mm -hmm. um, we really don't deal with the public. We don't we don't go out and and solicit their business. Gotcha. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so our business comes from lenders, uh, realtors, and attorneys. And um, once in a while, we'll we'll do some work for um, you know somebody that maybe is has a, an acreage that's wanting to subdivide it, and we might have to help them in that way. But um, typically, it's those three that are our clients. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, I admit, even as a realtor, I'm not super clear. You know, I know you guys work with ownership, but, you know, again, can, there's a lot of definitions in title. There's a lot of, like, vocabulary and terms. So I kind of wanted to get into that. Like, I know that a deed is an instrument that's used to transfer ownership, but I know there's a lot of different ways to hold title, to, to hold a deed, is that the same thing? Can you talk a little bit about types, like sort of ways to hold title, and a little bit about just deeds? Well, first of all, um, I want to say that anyone and everyone should always seek legal advice on tenancy. Okay. On a title. You mean the ways so it's the best way they for them can take to titles. hold okay. So they can take title as a joint tenants with uh, rights of survivorship. So that might be a husband and wife, could be a mom and a daughter and a son as joint tenants. Um, and what that typically, what that means is that one, upon the death of one of those people, title goes directly to that other tenant. Um, without a probate. Um, so a lot of, as I said, married people will take title as joint tenants, but they do want to talk to their attorney about that. Um, then we have tenants in common. There is uh, ownership 50-50. You could have two people, you could have four people, you can have, you know, a multitude of people. That would make it pretty um, I, it, that'd be tough for a title company to try to figure that out, but um, you might see that in families after the parents have passed away and maybe the kids take um, ownership as tenants in common and then they each have uh, their ownership in it and if someone passes away, let's say it's a husband and wife and uh, tenants is in common, um, one of them passes away and they're in tenants is common in common, um, that person has 50% of the estate. And so then that estate part would then look at his heirs and how we would um, finish, you know, that doing that transaction. You'd have 50% 50, 50 ownership for the one person that's still alive and 50% in the estate. Got it. So it's up to, if it's tenants in common, it's up to that person who gets it when they pass. It's not really automatically going to go to the joint tenant right. in the other type of right, right. holding. Tenants in common, right, is, okay. is two, two tenants. Two separate ones, yeah. okay. Um, I think I follow that. So what about, can you talk about different types of deeds? Um, so are you, you're talking about like warranty deeds? Yeah, special warranty, special warranty versus deeds. general warranty versus estate deed. Like aren't there a few uh, different PR types? deed you yeah. have to have if, it, if we have a death. Um, we're going to ask for the personal representative's deed um, to transfer title. Um, again, we're, 
we're walking a thin line because yeah. we want to make sure that we're, we're getting legal advice on all of this. And, and we know that realtors, you know, we can advise, you can advise, but they need to go get legal advice on if, do I use a, a general warranty deed or mm -hmm. do, I, do we want to use a special warranty deed? Um, again, there's many other deeds out there that, that they can look at using, but a lot of them boil down to being just quick claim deeds. Okay, so your general warranty deed and your special warranty deed have some warranties in them, and then once we get past that, it's pretty much just quick claim deeds with names, except for the, well, the PR's deed would be too. But a, we're passing we're passing title from the death of someone. Okay, got it. So quit claim quit, yes. not quick. Q I Q U I T <laughs> Q U I T. Those are the most common that you're using usually on like a day to day basis. You're writing a lot of quit claim no, deeds. No, we don't. Okay. <clears throat> so let me make that clear. Please. Title insurance companies do not really want to. Uh, uh, put together a, a quick claim deed for anyone because that quick claim deed, if you're adding someone to title, you're actually adding any baggage that person has. So for instance, if uh, a single woman wants to add her boyfriend and she is unaware that the boyfriend has got a tax lien against him, mm -hmm. has a judgment against him, the minute she adds him to title, those things are gonna, they're gonna, gonna attach to the property. And if she, she and he decide to sell the property, then we've got to clean up that title work in order to um, make sure the buyer has, has a home that's free and clear so that they can put their first lien on, for their mor mortgage on it. Right. But um, quick claim deeds, uh, I would say that they need to talk to their attorney. Sure, I'm. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I more meant that they're most commonly used to uh, change to change ownership. Oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Not necessarily. And you're saying that you guys really don't generate them. We don't. I now, see. We will if we have if we did the closing. Yep. And um, we uh, it, this just happened. I had a gal call me from out of state, and, and she owns a property here in Longmont. And she said, uh, my mother and I are on this deed and I want to add my husband. Mm. And so we pulled the old file and we said, what we'll do is uh, we'll add him to the title policy. Okay. And so that's an additional insured. And so we, there's a charge of $250 to add someone to title like to their owner's policy mm -hmm. because we're gonna first go see if he has anything out there sure. that we need to take care of so that we can ensure that policy, keep them all insured. And so that, that worked out fine. Uh, we did the additional insured we, and we actually prepared the quick claim deed for her. Mm -hmm. So that was okay, um, but we're, we're not gonna just, you can't just send your neighbor to us and say, hey, can you help Mrs. Jones here? She wants to add her dog on to title. <laughs> I see. I understand. So pretty much all you're doing, you guys need to be looked at as an insurance company. Mm -hmm. You assist with the closing process and the transfer of title, but you are not attorneys. You don't claim to be legal advisors of any right. sort, and you're just helping to facilitate that process. That's correct. So can we talk a little bit about that process of closing? Yes. Um, you know, I admit that as a realtor, I know that you hold earnest money in escrow, and maybe you can help us explain what that means. And then, you know, you make a lot of things happen that, in, to me, in my world, I'll be honest, is kind of magic. And um, as long as the wire transfer goes through, the loan goes through, the you know inspection works out, and the appraisal right. clears, like you guys do most of the heavy lifting come time for the actual closing. Right. Can you talk about like what goes into closing and what? Yeah. What all, what what that pile of documents is? Yeah, uh, so our job doesn't start really until we get the fully executed contract, right? So we're uh, we're not really a party to the contract. We are just facilitating the transaction for everyone. So your sellers have signed closing 
instructions saying that Fidelity National Title is is authorized to do our closing, and that's that's how it, it all goes starts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so once we get that uh, fully executed contract, um, and sometimes when we we might receive earnest money before we get it. So we have to wait to, have to get that contract in order to deposit that money. Sure. And that money goes into an escrow account and stays there. Um, and I know some real estate companies even do their own, mm -hmm. have their own, I think it's a trust account. Um, but we have, we have a, an account for that earnest money and then the ball starts rolling. We get a, we um, take, take that contract and we send it in to our title examiners who then put together our, our commitment to insure. And that's what realtors know as title commitment. And once that comes out, we see what things are against the property, what the history of the property is. It kind of tells the story of the home. And um, there are what's called requirements on that commitment. And those requirements are saying, we're committing to insure to the buyer if you can get all these requirements met. Mm. And those requirements typically are paying off the seller's mortgage. We're looking out there to see if there are any liens and judgments that we need to take care of. Mm -hmm. And that's not just against the seller, but also the buyer. If we find anything against the buyer, we're gonna ask that that be taken care of. And then as you go through the commitment, you're gonna see things that are, uh, are exceptions that show easements, uh, rights of way, uh, the covenants, a lot, a lot of information, good information for your buyers. So you're, you're digging deep historically on the property, the seller, and the buyer and just gathering as much data as you possibly can yeah. to get that, that contract to buy and sell to go through. Yes. And okay. we're committing to the buyer that you're going to own the property free and clear. That's, That's the goal. basically it. Yeah. Okay. And so that when they walk away, so something that I know we were maybe going to talk about was the state of Colorado is a, a good funds state so that at the closing table, we we don't have escrow like they have in several other states right. where the the buyer comes in and signs and then maybe 3 days later the seller comes in and so the buyer actually doesn't get the their uh, get the home until the deed records in Colorado everything happens at the table and everybody walks away, the seller walks away with their money, and the buyer walks away with the keys to the property. Oh, interesting. Yes, I've heard this. So there are some states you're saying that are, quote, escrow states. Right. And their process is a little different, but in Colorado, we're a title state, which means all at once, same day, within the same three right. hours, assuming the, the, the funds are good. We, ha we are a good funds state. Okay, right. got it. That just right. closes all, yep. hopefully all at the same right. time. Right. Cool. Which isn't happening now, but it's okay. <laughs> Typically, they're closing in the same day. Sure. So, sure, sure, sure. So, you mentioned title insurance policy and writing somebody into a policy. And you also mentioned that when I have a policy in place, I'm protected from the past. Can you give us another example? I'm not super clear yet on what might someone come up with from my past or my property's past that, you know, they, what, what would they take issue to and, and why would I need that protection? And can you tell me more about what a, pop, what a policy of property insurance or of title insurance really looks like? Well, we all know that there's something called owner's extended coverage, right? Um, and so with the owner's extended coverage, one of the things that it covers is survey matters. And let's just say that someone buys a property and uh, we want an ILC done. And the ILC gets done and they miss something. They miss that the fence is actually six foot off or three foot off and into the, the neighbor's property because it's just an ILC and they don't do it. It's not a survey because a survey is, is much better mm. surveying you know, by the inches. In an ILC, they, they kind of maybe meet a pin and, and pin and draw a line sure. and miss that three acres. Well, one day you want to put a fence in and you think, well, maybe I'll just have a surveyor come out and take a look. And the surveyor says, hey, you're, you've got three foot the, too much 
or your neighbors in, encroaching into your property. And if you wanted to, you could call the title insurance company and actually have a claim for that mm. if, um, if it came to that point, you know, if you and the neighbor couldn't work that out. So um, that's just one of the things. I mean, there's many things that can happen. Uh, it, it could be you had grandma and grandpa sitting at the table selling their property and um, their kids don't know that they have sat down to sell the property and there might be some inkling of grandma and grandpa not quite being with it, but yet we're signing documents. Mm. And um, the closing happens, the new buyer gets the house and a month later, the kids find out that grandma and grandpa sold the property and they know that they might not have been thinking when, mm -hmm. while they were really signing mm -hmm. documents. Gotcha. And um, that, you know, we would cover, I mean, that could be a possible claim that uh, they were maybe, maybe not coerced, but. Sure sign documents that they really weren't fully aware of what they were doing. Got it, got it. Those are great examples and I really appreciate that because you know, I know that what you do is title policy and I always tell my buyers you absolutely need it. I just haven't been in your shoes when, when the rubber meets the road. Um, well, and you know, we don't, we don't see a lot of claims. Um, if, a lot of, if, if we see claims, it's something, as I said, that that did happen in the past, and and that goes directly to to our well. It'll go to a local, like our local title examiner. But if it's it's beyond that, then we send it to our attorneys, and we don't really know what what the result end result is. Sure. Again, you're the facilitator. Yeah. yeah. You're the sort right. of right main street right. um, one stop shop, and then you in, you inform the right. others. So can you talk about that when you say we have our attorneys? They're not really in house, but they're referrals and they're right. people you work closely with. Um, they they work for Fidelity. I see. Yeah, and they're in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> okay. <Not bad. laughs> okay. And is Fidelity? Let's talk a little bit about that. You're in. Only Colorado, or are you in multiple states? No, we're actually nationwide. Oh, and as I said, um, we are the the nation's largest title insurance company. Yes. So, okay. I couldn't yeah. remember if you had presence in all fifty states or not. I think everything but Texas. Wow. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, amazing. Okay, so um, so you're one of the biggest. You guys. Or when you say the 1.8, can you revisit that? I was going to ask you what sets you oh, apart the, from the other title. Oh, the titles. claims reserve. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't know what, what our, and I, you know me, I don't talk about our competitors. Um, our competitors, as far as I know, have about, their claims reserve are about half as much as ours are. I see. So um, Fidelity National Title is um, our underwriter. And they also underwrite other agencies, um, per se, I guess. You could, we can underwrite, uh, at one time there was a company called Golden Dog Title. Oh, yeah. And Fidelity National underwrote, underwrote them. And then uh, we underwrite Heritage, we underwrite Chicago. Oh. So there's a lot of bigger title companies that we also underwrite. Gotcha. So um, we're, we're a large company. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a Fortune 500 company and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it, 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 the claims reserves would be rightly so when you're that big. Gotcha. So. I appreciate that explanation. Uh, my last question really is just what's up this hot buzzy topic right now, which is wire fraud. I wanted to ask you about, you know, wiring money, good funds, and what is wire fraud? I know it's something that title companies are really, um, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. they're very stringent about making sure that people are aware of it so that their money doesn't disappear. Um, you know, and there's always the old adage, like, don't show up to your closing with a suitcase full of cash, you know, bring right. your license. There are certain etiquette things that we as realtors also yeah. try to educate on. Right. But can you talk about like how to wire, wire, you know, a loan, how to fund a deal, how to actually make all that happen in a good timely fashion, make sure it's good funds. And how do you avoid, God forbid, wiring hundreds right. of thousands of dollars to the wrong place? Well, what it really boils down to is communication 
uh, from the seller to his closer. And really that's what it is on the day of closing or the day before closing. And it's a phone call because and really, some closers prefer to get wiring instructions from the seller at the table. Sure. They Just don't want safe. it in an email. They yeah. don't want, if anyone ever receives an email from what appears to be the closer, uh, that is fraudulent. We're never going to call your client and say, we're changing banks, so we need you to send us your wiring instructions to this email address right that is never going to happen with your closer right so i would say that the safest thing is if you do receive something in the way of an email or even a phone call i can't imagine a phone call you would call us and ask for your closer and communicate with your closer mm -hmm. and and that will stop anything from happening right then and there so we're not going to get your wiring instructions until either the day before closing or at the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. 700 attempts. Oh, yeah. Every day. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scary. I mean, wow. we're in that industry. Yeah. Millions of dollars in and out. Yeah, I guess it only takes one. Well, Dana, you've been a wealth of knowledge. You've been such a delight to have on. I know I learned some things, so I'm sure that my clients have as well. I really Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you, Thank Sarah. You. That's the proper tea. So